FL Sun has built a name for themselves over the past couple of years by making high quality budget Delta 3D printers. A little over a year ago, we tested out the FL Sun SR Delta 3D printer, which was really impressive and by far the best experience I've had with a Delta 3D printer until now. This beast is the FL Sun V400 that might look like the SR, but is quite a bit bigger, has a dual gear direct drive extruder and comes stock with clipper as well as a host of other upgrades. Since the unboxing two months ago, I've really gotten to spend some time with the V400, put it through its paces and print a couple of kilograms of material through this machine. In today's video, we will be diving into the V400. We'll go over its specs, what setup was like, how it prints, and my overall thoughts about this machine after using it for the last two months. This is the first non-kit retail 3D printer that I've gotten in that is running Clipper firmware, which is super exciting. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Voxel PLA is a brand new filament aiming to make 3D printing more accessible with their reliable and affordable filament. This filament has been used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm and is launching to the public on September 3rd. At launch, they will be offering PLA in black, white, gray, red, and blue with additional colors coming next year. My personal favorites are Fire Truck Red and Cool White. Voxel PLA will be priced at $16.99 per kilogram and at two spools shipping is free within the US. Bulk discounts are available for 10 or more spools and there is a dedicated form available for this. Links will be in the description to voxelpla.com so that you can find out more or pick up your own. Starting off, let's run through the specs and there really is a lot to cover here. As mentioned, the V400 is a Delta style 3D printer that is primarily constructed of beefy aluminum frames with sheet metal covers and carbon fiber arms for the tool head. The build volume is 300 by 410 millimeters, but since it is a Delta that is 300 millimeters in diameter and not a 300 millimeter rectangle since it has a rounded build plate. It is a 24 volt system and the bed comes standard with a powder coated PEI flex plate system, which is an upgrade I did to the FL Sun SR. It is my absolute favorite build surface and it is nice to see that coming stock on the V400. One massive change from the SR is that they got rid of the Bowden style extrusion system and went with a dual gear direct drive all metal hot end extruder, which is pretty damn impressive. It seems to be their own in-house design and uses a smaller stepper motor to keep weight down. The hot end has a volcano style heat block and now an all metal hot end with a bimetal heat break, allowing you to print at 300 Celsius out of the box. This is something I'm really thrilled about. I've been complaining about PTFE lined hot ends for quite a long time. The price difference to upgrade is usually pretty low. And so I'm glad to see that they decided to include it just out of the box with this printer. There are two cooling fans with really nice shrouds that look like SLS prints, and there are three strips of LEDs around the tool head that really help to light up the build area and are great for seeing your first layer go down. For leveling, the V400 uses automatic bed leveling that is near identical to what the Super Racer was using. It clips onto a plug at the tool head, attaches to some magnets, and sits right below the nozzle. After running the leveling, you disconnect it and put it away. It was effective on the SR and it has been effective on the V400 since the build plate is completely stationary and doesn't do any moving at all. You really don't have to re-level the build plate or run another mesh very often. For motion, I thought that the V400 used linear rails, but it's actually using linear guides. I still think I prefer linear rails, but the guides have worked great and are way better than something like your traditional cheap roller wheels. The belts are beefy and they all have their own tensioners. There's also a filament runout sensor at the top of the printer, along with a LED backlit FL Sun logo that can be turned on or off using a macro. What's probably the most exciting thing to me though, is that this machine comes standard with clipper and Clippers actually ran off of this little tablet or pad that's included with it that's running a flavor of Linux and it also is running a skinned version of Clipper screen which is a very bright and beautiful interface for controlling every aspect of your 3D printer. Since it's running Clipper, it comes with the goodies that you would expect from Clipper like wireless connectivity, monitoring and file transfer through mainsail, as well as input shaper and pressure advance which really contributes to the speed that this machine is able to achieve. I did crack open the top and bottom to take a look at the electronics and on the top I found a 32-bit MKS Raw Robin Nano 2.0, 
fitted with TMC 2226s along with a breakout board and fairly large cooling fan. Down below is a 24 volt 18.7 amp PSU with separate MOSFET board. Unboxing and assembly was completely done on live stream over on the ModBot Army channel and I will have that linked in the description if you want to check it out. Most of the time was spent attaching these three pillars to the top and bottom of the 3D printer <laughs> and the thing that took me the longest was feeding this wire harness or power and data cable through the channel of the aluminum extrusion. It was not easy and on stream we ended up using a bit of NinjaFlex TPU to tie it around the wires or the cables and then to help me pull it through but that was by far the biggest struggle and I actually let FLSA know that maybe they want to include some string or something like that to make it easier because there's no way that you will be able to just slide it through the channel without some sort of string or something to help pushing or pulling the wires through. It wasn't a huge deal and will only have to be done once but it was definitely a funny experience on stream and it had me laughing pretty hard. Other than that, the assembly was pretty straightforward. After powering it on, we installed the leveling switch and ran through the leveling sequence. I have not re-leveled the printer in two months since we first unboxed it and assembled it and all the calibration on stream. I will say though that as I've been running some larger prints, I am starting to notice that certain spots, it seems like the nozzle is a little bit further away. So it's probably a good idea if I do run another mesh bed leveling on this since because maybe the bed or the build plate or something like that has shifted around a little bit. When the leveling finished, we quickly set up the Z offset with a piece of paper and printed out a nut and bolt model that came pre-sliced. It started off pretty uneventful due to how the model was sliced, which I believe was in Cura since that's what they ship with it. And after a couple of layers though, we did get to see it start to pick up speed. On stream, I wasn't able to get the web interface or mainsail to pop up, but afterwards I discovered it was actually due to my router and it popped right up without any issues and has worked great since. I printed out the remainder of the test files that came pre-sliced, which included a test cube, small bunny, and overhang test. Then I was ready to slice up my own files and the printer shipped with a slightly older version of Cura, which is what they recommended using. It was 4.13. I've since discovered that they are now shipping with the latest or at least Cura 5.0, but for most of the printing, I stuck with the Cura 4.13 because that's what came with the printer. The speeds that were included in the profile were pretty damn fast with the acceleration set to 8,000, travel speed at 400 millimeters a second, infill 350 and inner walls 280 again millimeters per second. With these settings, I did quite a bit of printing. I printed out the Moon City model from Kaija that I really love, the Krusty Koozie for Chris Russell's birthday from Bugman, a Skull Planter from Chaos Cortec, a Star Wars Lithophane, a Boba Fett model, and a massive three-part Dust Collector Cyclone model from Tom Llama. The quality was pretty damn impressive, especially when you consider the speed it was running at and that I had done zero tuning at all. I did notice that at fast speeds, the fans definitely struggled a bit with overhangs, Beefier fans could help with this, but without having a much larger external fan blowing across the printer, I do feel it will still be tough to keep up at those top speeds. For some reason, when I was doing some of the slicing too, I noticed a loud dragging sound, like the nozzle was dragging across the previous layer, which I couldn't exactly figure out. When I contacted FL Sun, they said to use gyroid infill that had something to do with the slicer. I can confirm that the gyroid infill made a much bigger difference and it almost completely got rid of that issue, but I'm still not quite positive as to what that issue is or what's causing it on certain models and I still need to probably do a bit more investigating on that. It had minimal effect on any of the prints, but it just made the printing quite a bit louder than it needed to be. I also printed a lid for the dust collector in PETG before I decided to go with PLA. That turned out fine with the exception of the threads on one side, which I also believe is related to cooling, once again, printing at those quick speeds. Since this printer has a fairly short filament path, I was excited to print out some TPU. And wow, was that a struggle. I tweaked speeds, temps, offsets, retraction distance, retraction speeds, and quite a few other things. And no matter what, after a layer, after a couple of layers, it would stop, it would stop extruding. And I was thinking that maybe it was heat creep related because the filament, the TPU wasn't tangling around the extruder and I could not figure out what the cause was, but it seemed like no matter what I tried, it was like, 
one step forward and two steps backwards when printing with TPU. Then I saw Lost in Tech post on Twitter that he had gotten one of the cleanest TPU prints ever off of his V400 and I was at a loss. I reached out to him asking if he was willing to share his Kira profile, which he graciously did share with me. And that's when I found out that his had come with Kira 5.0 and they had done some changes to the profile. I still haven't done a comparison of the profile that Lost in Tech sent me and the one I have been using, but I took his profile, sliced up the exact same model, didn't change a single thing at all, and the print turned out great. I definitely need to do some more investigating, but as I suspected, although the speeds of that TPU profile were like 50 or 60 millimeters a second, so much slower than the warp speed of printing PLA or PTGs, it definitely can print TPU and that phone case that I got off of here was a damn clean phone case. Lost in Tech has officially earned the nickname TPU Whisperer in my book. And if you have not checked out his channel, he's also got a lot of great videos. He did a review on the V400, which I have not watched yet because I tried to avoid watching any reviews on a printer I'm testing until I'm done. But I will have his channel link in the description if you want to check that out as well. He's got some awesome content. The V400 is a lot of printer, and even after two months of playing around with this thing, I still feel like there is so much more I want to cover and so many more things I want to try out, but I will do my best to summarize my thoughts. This printer came with default values for input shaper and pressure advanced, which is what I've kept it at because I think that a lot of people, maybe not, but I think that a lot of people might be getting this that aren't super familiar with Clipper, and I wanted to just see how it performed. I do think that if you play around with input shaper and pressure advanced, on your own for your specific machine in front of you, that you can push this thing even quicker and faster and get even cleaner prints. Having a printer come stock with Clipper is an absolute treat, and I really hope that we start to see more of this, especially when we're talking about performance 3D printers that are just geared to be able to print quickly and print well and throw all sorts of things at them. I was a definite fan of the FL Sun SR and I made sure to take that printer with me when we moved from California to Idaho. And they basically took everything that was amazing about the SR and just raised the bar on it. If you're interested in a Delta printer, I have a hard time believing you'll find something that's more feature packed than the V400, especially at the price point that it's going for, which is under $1,000. The price of the SR is $459, while the V400 is going for $849, which is a pretty big difference. I still feel that the SR is a great machine, but when I look at the price difference, my thoughts are sort of this, is that at $459, if you add a PEI magnetic flex plate system, you upgrade it to a quality dual gear and direct drive system, you give yourself some sort of a screen to run Clipper screen, and then you add a Raspberry Pi or whatever you're gonna be using to run Clipper, and then you can't exactly make the frame bigger, but the frame on this is bigger, I do feel like the price is actually more than fair. And having the two side by side, again, I thought the SR, and the SR certainly still is a beast, but this thing is just a monster even compared to the SR. Another thing that might be a huge plus for many is that if you want the SR route and decided to upgrade, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you have a specific config you want, then maybe that makes a lot of sense. But for a lot of people, the ability to just sort of attach the pillars, turn it on, and then have it ready to rock and roll without any modding or wiring or, or anything else configuring a firmware is, is going to be a huge plus and time saver. The pad screen running Linux that comes with the printer can be used to connect a webcam, which I did do briefly for monitoring prints or time lapses, but according to FL Sun, it can also be used to control and run Clipper on up to three printers. So I have it right now obviously hooked up to the V400. I plan on hooking it up to the SR. Uh, the SR I think is still running Clipper from before the move, but I'll remove the Raspberry Pi and use this instead and then see if I can hook it up to even a third printer. But that's a very, very cool feature of the pad touchscreen tablet that comes with this machine. As always though, there's no such thing as a perfect 3D printer. And if I had to nitpick, I can pick out a couple of things. For starters, I, I, as much as these linear guides have been great, they seem to be performing really well, they're stiff, they're a lot better than the roller wheels, I still think I would have preferred to have had linear rails, and I actually thought until it showed up that it came with linear rails. I also wouldn't be upset if they had gone with slightly beefier fans. Yes, maybe it would have increased the mass or it would have made added a little bit of extra weight, but I think it would have been negligible, and in my experience with this machine, when you are pushing when you're printing on models that have overhangs and you're going at those quick speeds, it can struggle to keep up with cooling. 
Also, the spool holder being on top requires you to either be an absolute giant or have some sort of a step stool. Because it's a direct drive, they have it mounted on top while the SR had it mounted lower, if I'm not mistaken. It could be incorrect, but I feel like it was much lower on the SR. Um, so I'm probably where it's going in the garage. I'm probably going to be needing a step stool, but it's definitely something to consider if you're a short person is that where are you going to place this thing? And then lastly, the screen on this, and I don't think they could have done the same route as the SR, but the SR had a touch screen as well. Granted, it was probably about a third of the size, but it had a stretchy cord to it and a magnet that you can just mount it to that would allow you to pivot it. On this, it comes out the bottom extrusion. You don't have nearly as much length and it comes with a little stand to kind of set it down. And it's not that big of a deal, but I do wish the tablet situation was a little bit different. And I'm thinking about possibly coming up with some sort of printable file where I can mount this thing to the frame just to clear up some space. But I just, I really liked the solution they had for the screen on the SR and I don't, I love the unit, but I don't like this short cable coming out the bottom nearly as much. With so many 3D printer manufacturers just copying and pasting the exact same formula with a little bit of a different colored injection molded plastic on it, it's really exciting to see FL Sun just kind of doing their thing, making Delta printers and with every single release just pushing the bar and I, it's awesome. The FL Sun V400 is an awesome 3D printer and I am super excited to do a lot more printing on it and put many, many more hours on this machine. And that has been the FL Sun V400. There is and was an absolute ton to cover. I am sure there are things that I did not cover that I wish I had and afterwards I will remember. Uh, but if there is any questions that you have, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer but hopefully this covered at least the majority of it. Links will also be in the description over to their website. If you do wanna find out more or purchase one for yourself, you can do so. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel, furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love Love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.